Welcome back to another episode of Sus with Sam. This is episode 13. This is Corey, and that is one of the cleanest GU use I have ever seen in my life, and we are about to tell you all about it. Let's start with you, man. What so, is it? This is my 2001 GU Patrol. Pretty custom. <laughs> I'd say very custom. Uh, red. 2001. It's a series two, but yeah, a series four. Series four front end. Front end. Built for touring. Yeah, tough hard tracks. wheeling mainly. Yeah. You know, do a little bit of touring in it, but um see where it takes us. I like it, I like it. And obviously, this thing is still sort of in the build stage, hasn't even got Rego engineering no, sorted yet, yet. Uh, but we couldn't help ourselves if we come out and film it, because the last few bits and pieces are not that major. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd come out and see it before it gets mangled off road somewhere. I think we're gonna start up the front, work our way to the back, and show you guys what's under the bonnet, because it's not just a ZD or a TD or any of that junk. It's, um, it's something pretty hot under there. And one of the best parts about what Corey's built here is that the shed behind the car is where 95% of this thing was created and built by himself. So yeah, sure. this is the definition of uh, built not bought, I guess. Let's dive into it, man. Let's start with the bar work, I reckon. Yeah, so bar's a Millwell GU Extreme bar. Yeah, one of the few things on the car that you didn't build yourself. Yeah, one of the few things. Yep. Got the worn high mount. Yep. Fairly modified, braced. Uh, Air free spool, all the good gear. All the expensive um, gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big winch. The bar looks really sick. I think if you're going to build a GU, it almost needs a middle bar on the front. Yeah, it's yeah just, for sure. It's so good. It makes the front just of them look the so The approach tough. angle you get out of it and everything. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then we move on to the side, and this is where the stuff that you've started yeah, building. Yeah, this is where I come into it. Yeah. So, got all the custom sliders, brush bars, um, ties into all the tray and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be fairly sturdy. I'd say so. It's good to see you've used those real tidy roll bar joiners as yeah, well, which is mad, yeah. so you can remove it all as well. Yep. The tray is sick. Tube guards are sick. Yeah. Very aggressive, short, sick departure angle. You built all that yourself as well? Yeah, everything. Underneath the tray, I see you've utilised a lot of the space for things like trans coolers. Trans coolers you've got the um, sway bar running through there. Yeah. You've got a pretty spicy exhaust and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. you did all that yourself? Yeah, all that, all myself. Yeah, yeah wow. Well, very talented man, this guy. Would have been helpful to know you a year ago. <laughs> and one of my favourite things about this car is the colour. It's yeah. like, it reminds me a lot of the Naughty 40 after we got a re-sprayed, but a lot nicer job has been done in this than what yeah. mine was done. What's the colour? Um, is it based off anything? No, so it's a bit. Uh, so my cousin at uh, Richo's Paint and Detail painted it for me. Um, I kind of just let him go with it. So it's a ca custom candy apple red. It, yeah, looks it, sick. Ch it changes depending on the colour. I was gonna yeah. say, it's like, it looks lighter here than when we were just up the road. Yeah. It looks a bit darker. It's such a nice, gorgeous colour. Um, and the fact that you've tied it in with the um, visor, even on the in bits of the interior, yeah. done the match it, plus in the engine bay, which we're about to show you guys, it's a well thought out car. Twin snorkels. The people out there are probably like this guy with douchebag, because one of those might be plumb, but you're about to see that actually both are completely functional and both are probably well needed actually to suck, yeah. suck the air in that this thing would be breathing. The visor's sick, everything's sick. I reckon we show the people what's under the bonnet because it's one of those things that's just, it has, it's been done before, but I don't think it's been done this tidily. This yeah. is like a proper work of art, so we'll pop the bonnet. Now, we're not gonna make them guess what this engine is because I think 99.9% .9 of them will know exactly what it is, but yeah, what sure. was in the front of this? So it was a ZD30 at okay. one point. Straight in the bin, I hope. Yeah, yeah didn't, cool. didn't make it far. I can imagine. Um, and yeah, replaced it with this 6.2 litre LS3. Yeah. Um, it's got just uh, the rods, pistons, and cam done. So fairly yep. basic LS combo. Yeah. And like of it. course, both air boxes. Got to have both snorkels plumbed up. Plumbed up. Yeah. No other way you, about it. Yeah, I like it. So uh, if you're going to do twin snorkels, I think you got to plumb them both up. Yeah, Otherwise, sure. you're just a bit of a douchebag. <laughs> um, some of the things I love about this is a obviously both air boxes are plumbed, and the way they go into the um, top of the engine is super sick. Yeah. You've done a killer job with that. I also love that the piping from the snorkel to the air box and the air box base is painted to match the body <laughs> color as well. Like all these little extra touches take it from you know like the nine out of ten to just the full ten yeah. out of ten. Like such good attention to detail. Um, should we tell the people your plans for the future with the, with the power related things or is it is it top secret? Oh, no, not really. I suppose you can. Yeah. Um, so if, if a 6.2 .6 6 litre. litre wasn't enough power. It may get a spoolie boy on the side <laughs> towards the end of next year, maybe. That would be hot. We love, we love boost on this channel, so. I mean, the simplicity of an NA is very attractive, but the noises yeah. of a big spool V8 would be very nice. Massive radiator. Yeah, four core radiator with yep. uh, the BDS shroud. 
yep. got the twin 16 inch spell fans on it so yeah, it keeps the big girl cool yeah absolutely and then obviously an engine like this made it up to a 6L80 6L80 automatic so, yeah 6 speed sick. auto out of the Commodore sick and then you've got a massive size uh, set of thermo fans or um, yeah, trans in the back. the back to keep it all cool Man, you've done a nice job. It fits really well in here yeah. as well. They're so low and I guess such a light motor too. Yeah. That um, it's probably a really good logical conversion yeah, for, sure. for these things. Um, did you do the actual the kit yourself, like the engine mounts uh, and stuff? Or? So that's all Mark's um, adapters. But yeah. like I've wired it. Um, I've done everything else myself, pretty much. Yeah. Wild. And then yeah. fuel system wise, what are we looking at from uh, pumps, injectors, and fuel tank? Uh, point of view? Injectors are the standard ones at the moment. Um, fuel pumps are 460 Walbro, I believe. Yep. And then it's just got the Toyota Smart Reg out there. All yep. the factory lines yep. running up the chassis and whatnot. Yeah, sick. Yeah. It's very nice in here. Goes with the rest of the car as well. So, to. like, some LS swaps are like dog's breakfast, and there's just like a spaghetti of wiring laid over yeah. the rocket covers and stuff. and uh, over the uh, intake and stuff, and it's just like, what is going on here? But this thing looks factory. If you yeah. didn't know what you were looking at, you'd be mistaken for thinking this came standard like this. You've done an excellent job, my friend. Yeah, it's not going very good. I reckon we uh, duck down the side. We'll take a look at the suspension wheels and tires, yeah, because that's another thing that you've built and done really nicely with a lot of thought. We'll jump up the back, we'll take a look at that tray a bit closer, and then yeah, we'll show sure. people the inside, because Zach's worked his magic, and it is, uh, it's impressive to say yeah. the least. My boy Zach's done it again. Done it again. But right, let's take a look. Wheels, tire suspension, everyone's favourite topic to discuss. Now, we were chatting before about this not really being built for insane flex and that sort yeah. of thing, which I think is a good thing. Obviously, it's the right blend between tough, tough track touring, still having yeah. on-road prowess and, and driving nice with the V8 and the auto. But you have also done heaps to the suspension yeah, as well sure. to get it driving nice. So we'll talk front end for now. Obviously, 37 inch traps. 37 inch traps. Good album. Bead locks. Bead locks, yeah. Yeah, the better have ones. I like it, I like it. And then suspension wise, it looks like you've gone ham. Yeah, I've done a bit to it. Um, buds, long arms in the front. Yep. Uh, built 2.5 inch uh, Dobinson remote res, three way adjustable ones. Uh, hydro bumps in the front. Here we go. Stack of superior arms. Yeah, superior drag link and tie rod. Yep. Um, Very cool. Sway bar in the front. Yep. Just a superior superflex sway bar in the front. Yep. For now. Yep. Um, you can see the hydros in here, steering dampener, all that sort yep. of stuff. PSR bracing on the diffs. Yep. Um, yeah, 4 6 ARB locked. Yeah. All nice. the usual stuff. Hot sh and then we forgot to mention the engine bay, but we'll talk about it here. Brakes for this thing. Obviously, it's going to be fully engineered and that sort of thing, and that yep. has some requirements of itself. Um, I see you've got slotted yeah, rotors. Yeah, so just upgraded the Bendix, um, you know, slotted rotors and pads. Uh, it's got the hydro booster on the on the master, so that runs off the, the power steering pump. Yep. Um, Which I think is a very clever way to do it, because we'll get some shots of it. It's so compact in yeah. there now, instead of trying to squeeze. I mean, you've probably seen in the... Um, in the 80 series build, trying to fit that dual diaphragm booster in with the master plus the coilover towers and stuff, it's so, so tight. And then seeing what you've done up there, I'm like, ah, that would have been a better option from the start. But you live and you learn. I also see some of the biggest cabling I've ever seen in my life bolted to the wheel arch yeah. here. You would have noticed, not in the engine bay, there's no batteries. Well, I guess we'll show the people the interior in a second, but massive winch obviously takes some juice to power yeah for sure 2000 amp uh, cranking batteries in the back behind the seat so that also does 1224 to the winch a uh, bit more power yeah pulling up them steep hills mega speed yeah, yeah i like it no, very tiny man and obviously this was a body off frame build yeah in terms of the chassis itself obviously it's been painted and stuff but it looks like it's been braced a lot through uh, the spring yeah. hats, the coil towers. Yeah, and then all down the back side. Uh, all down the back, the back well. of it. Yeah, sick. No, nah, it's super cool, man. Having everything painted is so nice, hey? Yeah, so, so nice. nice. Until Something. you take it off-road for the first time. I oh, know, nah, I don't <laughs> want to even think about it. I think Corey and I are in the same boat where it's been quite a long build process for the cars, the 80 series and this GU, and they're at that sort of last point where the last 10% takes the most amount of work, and it's all the annoying fiddly shit and it's like the big day is looming where eventually they're going to go off-road yeah. and they're going to get trashed and we're going to be very, very sad, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Right. We'll emotionally prepare for that over the yeah, next couple sure. of months. Let's jump up the back. We'll talk about the tray and the rear suspension. Yep. Sick. 
Up the back is more Fabrication Boogaloo Party Central. Uh, obviously, 37 traps again, bead locks, all the good stuff we love. One thing we forgot to mention in the engine bay was that Corey is a fabricator by trade, and therefore, the tray and the bar work and the intake systems and the air boxes and all that sort of stuff has all been done himself. But one thing that he's done himself as well, we forgot to talk about, is one of the number one works of art I've seen is the exhaust. This thing does snakes and bends that I didn't think were possible. Um, starting at the headers, stainless headers. Yeah, so it's got stainless Marks headers that come with the kit. Yep. Um, and then from there I went three inch stainless and then stepped it up to three and a half. So and then it goes into a three and a half inch Varex muffler. So it's yep. on a key, I can quieten it and make it louder and whatnot. Yep. Sick. Uh, yeah, it keeps going three and a half just to a resonator and then just dumps out the back here. Nice. All uh, stainless TIG welded. Yeah, it looks sick. Good to see if you used that. Gotta have them pretty well. The V-bands as well. Yeah, all V-banded. Yeah, so. it makes it so much easier than yeah. just using flanges Blowing and bolts and stuff. Yeah, nightmare. We, you probably saw the episode with Max when we did the exhaust on my car. It took literally a week to do when you're weaving stuff like this around all custom work and you're using V-bands and stuff. It's such a nightmare. So if you've seen that, you can probably appreciate the time and effort that Corey's gone through to do this and he's done a damn good job. Now hiding behind this tire is all the suspension. Again, the rear end is probably a little bit more fruity than the front. Yeah. What are we looking at? So it's got all the, the basic stuff, the Dobos 2.5s, uh, superior hydro bump kit. Yeah. It's got PSR long arms on the bottom but yep. and then the top's got a camfab uh, falling kit. Sick. And followed by alley upper arms which yep. uh, hill fab uh, machine them up. He done a good job there. Yep. Yeah, that's who did all mine as well, um, Hill Fab. Yeah, he's, he's cracker. The god. Yeah. That, Himes, massive DFI sway bar in the back as well. Yeah, which DFI is sway bar in the back. Um, so you don't have to take that out when you go wheeling or whatnot. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't limit travel. Yeah, which is so good. We're currently dealing with this disaster I've been talking about where what sway bars to run in my car. Yeah. I, leaning towards, yeah, the ramped or the DFI bars, I think, for at least the rear, because otherwise you have to take them out. And, like, yeah. That's just an absolute head. Um, good to see you got the adjustable canisters here. Fuel storage, what are we looking at? Because obviously a V8 Heady is probably going to be a little a little thirsty. Yeah. I had a Cam VY at one point and it loved to drink. Um, what are we looking at? So it's a full drive systems, 176 litre uh, fuel tank. Yep. So it's a factory replacement, just goes a little bit higher. Yeah, sick. Uh, I think if you got a wagon or something, maybe you have to lift the cab or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, don't have that issue here, so. Yeah, no, nice. I like it. 176 litres should be enough yeah. to get you most places, well, I think. The, the sub tank's deleted, so. Yeah, yeah. You, same as me. Sub tank out. I think you have to probably for the full yeah. link. Yeah, same issue as me. And then you put a, the biggest tank you can fit in the back. Yeah, for sure. And I think if you're going to hit that on things in the RSA and you've probably got bigger issues to, to worry about than, yeah. than just your fuel getting smacked anyway. And you can see all through here the bracing that you were talking about as well. Yeah. Just the fish plate of the whole thing. Make it super strong. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely sick. The tray, tube guards, sliders, roll bar joiners, mud flaps. Pretty basic, yeah. but it's, um, overall it looks sick and it's going to be super strong. strong. Yeah. Cape, 2024. Yeah. Just the swag it. on the back, you reckon? Yeah, probably. I probably like just it. Just a swag. I like it. I've, all the times I've done Cape, was pretty basic setups as well. Swags and a fridge and an awning. So. I think you're done. I think you have a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. We'd go up there and rally pack the whole PDR and be sick. <laughs> Absolutely. I reckon we jump inside and have a look at the work that Zach's done in the interior to Corey's car because it's absolutely sick. We can talk more as well about some hidden stuff that you can't see that has sort of helped make it all this cohesive build because it's super, super sick. So yeah. we'll jump in and take a look sees. Interior. I'm surprised you fit for starters because I know GU single cabs aren't that spacious oh. and you're a tall prick it's not a single cab we forgot to mention it's oh. actually been chopped you're kidding yeah right yeah so it's not even a factory single cab <laughs> probably one of the biggest things we missed <laughs> yeah right wild so it's, it was started life as a started life as a wagon yeah and then wild. got bored and chopped the back of it off i like it so that's what gives you this i guess like that almost yeah. a space cab look so is that being extra... six two or six three or whatever i am got plenty of room in here yeah right. so you can go back even further yeah sick nice well pedals. i guess it's a um I guess it's a compliment to you because it looks factory. Yeah. And I, I had a close look. I was like, yeah, cab vans, like the rear glass looks factory and everything. I was like, maybe this is just how utes are, but that's the show. I don't know sh all about <laughs> patrols. But anyway, that's cool to know. The inside is sick as well. This yeah. was all done by our friend Zach, yeah. um, who's the upholstery, one of many upholstery yeah, the masters. 
Um, run us, run us through it. Uh, I suppose start from the top. So Zach done all the roof liner, blacked it all out. Uh, done a custom roof console, which has all my switches for the winch and uh, a couple of lights and whatnot. Um, all the dash is being painted black. Nice. Uh, just to go with a bit more modern. Yeah. Uh, series four steering wheel. Yep. Uh, so it's still series two dash. Yeah. So yeah. series two, three dash. Yeah. They're all cool. the same. Sweet. Uh, it's got the Haltech uh, dash cluster, so the IC7. Yeah. IC7, that's sick. Got the same one in the 80. Yeah. And one thing that we forgot to mention as well, lots of lots of things we forgot to mention, but anyway, don't worry about that, <laughs> is that the ECU controlling this thing is it's still the, the factory, factory LS computer, yeah. but through some kind of Black Witch related magic, it's got an IC7 and Haltech dash talking to it. Yeah. How does that work? So uh, I believe it just goes over the can low and high, but um, Dan from Dirty South Engineering set all that up for me. Sick. So. Very cool, and it's it's not just slapped in there either. It's got like the 3D printed bezel around it, yeah, and it's all talks to the gears and stuff. Yeah, it does everything. Too. No, no gauges needed, so yeah. keeps everything in the one yeah one spot. It's so, tidy, so good. Now that I've had the Haltech dash in mine, I couldn't go back to yeah. having all the you know pillar pod, pillar pod, pillar pod, and all this everywhere. Yeah. It's just a nightmare. Um, the seats you're sitting in, Falcon seats. Yeah, so Falcon uh, GTP seats. Yep, which Zach obviously trimmed them up for me. He's done well. Um, Very nice. You even did the like the center console lid. Yeah, the center that, console lid's sick. done. Very cool. Uh, it's got the Polaris Universal Max head unit. Yep. Um, Very tidy. Now the biggest thing I think that we were speaking about was how you've made six L eighty shifter somehow yep. seamlessly factory style integrate into this interior. Yeah, it so wasn't wasn't an easy it feat. It wasn't easy. It took me a couple of arvos to work it out, but it's got a custom linkage on it that goes to the gearbox. Um, there's a I guess you could call it a drop box under there for the transmission cover just to sit the shifter at the right height and whatnot, yep. the right angle. Yep. And just a little bit of trimming of the surround and it all fits under there pretty nice. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I like it. You were saying, obviously, with the 6L80 shifter, it sits at quite an angle. Yeah. So you have to sort of account for that when you're yeah. building it out so that it does sit level and not all janked at a weird, yep. weird sort of location. And then just an aeroflow ratchet style shifter. Yeah, just the ratchet bolts, bolts on top. Yeah. The factory, that's just the factory VE shifter. Yeah. See. Man, overall, you've done such a stellar job on this yeah. thing. It's like one of those things where no, I guess, stone has been left unturned. Yeah. The ending like, bay is super tidy. The body matches everything. Yeah. The tray, all the bar works sick. The interior is immaculate. Has it got lockers in it? Yeah, so ARB locked front and rear, four six diffs. Um, 85 reductions in it. Matt, we've mentioned that. Crawley boy. Yeah. So. Right. Auto reductions, four six six. Crawly, should go anywhere. Crawly slow, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. And if it doesn't, you've got the world's fastest yeah. wrench to drag you up it. Yeah, um, it. Now, hiding behind these seats is a little bit of fruit as well, plus yep. four tons in, in batteries and <laughs> cabling. Yeah. So, I've got the, both the batteries sitting behind the seat, and uh, underneath the passenger seat, there's the red winch supercharge box. So, that does yep. the 1224 for the winch. Uh, under this seat's the air compressor on an all good off road air compressor mount. Yep. It's got all the solenoids on it because the winch has a few solenoids on it. Two. For the air, yeah, for the air freeze. Yep. You got the sub behind this as well. Gonna have your tunes. Gotta have that. Yeah, sick. And even like little things that like noticing more about like even trimming the door cards with like the Alcantara, yeah. red stitching, painting um painting, all painting the, around the door handles yeah. red as well to match the body cover, like super super sick man. You've done you've done God's work with this thing. It's gonna be a shame when it goes off road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, people say that to me. So um and then obviously up in the yeah, so the comms, console, the comms. The GME XRS on yep. the magnet mount. Sick. Best thing ever. Steady rock lights as the yep. uh, cab lights Steady through. rock lights there. Yeah. Um, and then it's got the GME aerial and the GME AM FM for the radio on the uh, bar. Yeah, sick. Awesome, man. Nothing you haven't thought about, I like it. No. But, uh, um, I reckon we jump out the back and we have a listen to this thing at idle, give it a little, a little rev bang, yep. and uh, we'll leave you to enjoy your Friday idle. How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> I thought before we say goodbye, we should take a quick rip around the shed because in this space right here, this pretty much bay is where the entirety of that GU was built yeah, sure. over the past 18 months. Now you're a fabby by trade. 
uh, which probably helped out a fair yeah. bit because there's a load of fabrication work in that thing. But frame off, body off right yeah. here, weld everything up with the, with the welders in the back yeah, here. Welders. Yeah. Grind everything. Crazy. How many late nights, Jericho? Have you even tried to total the hours? Or? No, you can't. Yeah. The whole thing was about 18 months start to finish, but... Yeah, um, is that every Arvo weekend? Yeah, every Arvo, pretty much living same. in here. Yeah, nice. So. Well, you, get, you hear stories of like Jock and Matt Kinsella when they were doing his car, like just rolling swags out in the yeah. workshops and stuff. And I think for most people that are building stuff themselves in a shed, that's pretty much the life that you uh, sign up to live for a while there. But yeah. um, man, it's cool to... Uh, it's cool to see the space that you built this in. I think forever, a shed like this is going to hold so many memories for um, for keep working on the cars and yeah. that sort of thing. And I reckon we might have to get you along for a, a wheel of 80 yeah. series soon. Always down. A couple of unregistered rigs go wheeling. But uh, no, thanks for joining us. Thanks for showing us the car. Yeah, appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. And if you guys want to find out anything more about this car, we'll drop Corey's socials in the, on the screen here and you can follow him because there's always stuff happening with this thing. Yeah. A damn tidy rig, so. See you next time.